Hi hobby friends! Fancy painting some Nurglings? Of course you do. What sums up the vile brew that is Warhammer better than some disgusting, mischievous, and comically cute little green men? And as you can probably hear, I'm taking a visit from Papa Nurgle in the form of a mucousy head cold right now, so it all falls together, doesn't it? I've based in black, but I'm covering over very nearly all of that with this dark purple now. The black is here so that our really, really dark shadows don't get washed out and insipid looking, but our real shadow colour is this purple. But Nurglings are green, I hear you cry. True. So let's bridge towards the green with some nice turquoise mid-tone underpainting. The angle of attack has changed from front on to top down, but nothing fancy is going on here, just a little spritzy. You could even dry brush this if you were so inclined. I do like a little variety on my baby Nurgles though, so let's filter in a little orange here on one of the chaps. The paints, as always, are listed in the description, but don't get too caught up in brands and specifics here. Purple, turquoise, a little orange, and then some pinkish skin tone over the whole lot. We've been building a ton of chromatic variety and information, but I do want a relatively neutral base to get my really nurgly colours to shine. This final airbrush bit will do that for us, and it'll be the last light to pull focus where we want it. And just like that, it's time to filter. Two shades of green and a flesh tone contrast style paint on the palette, and all we're doing here is coating each Nurgling in a sickly layer of their own colour, trying to avoid weird pooling and watermarks as is usual with this sort of thing. Hopefully it's already becoming clear what all that underpainting has done for us instant, complex shadows and lights that are at once unique to each skin tone, but cohesive across the whole mini. Very cool stuff. But no time to bathe in colour theory glory. After a blast from the hairdryer, onwards we go to, well, some more underpainting. This time it's the turn of the wounds, which get a base coat of an earthy, warm yellow, and some very rudimentary highlights with a bone colour. While we're on that, we can grab the eyes here as well, but with a cool white instead, just titanium white with a teeny tiny bit of blue. Nothing like eyeing up your little guys to bring them to life. When the wounds are dry, a quick lick of a blood-coloured contrast paint gets them looking lovely and gory, but we'll need a slightly different shade of red for those cheeky grins. Subtle adjustments of colour temperature is an easy way to get variety while maintaining coherence, and, well, I just think their tongues and gums look better in a cool red like this as well. Two minutes to pick out the teeth in bone, and when that's dry we're all good in the grin department. And if you were in a real, real rush, in about 20 to 30 minutes you could get to this stage, but we can do just a little bit more and lift these bad boys up past battle ready pretty easily, so let's do that. First off, a little more structure would be nice, wouldn't it? We can get that by basing these horns in a very dark brown. What I mean by structure here is all those visual cues that help you decipher, at a glance, what is going on on a mini. Changing up the horns gives our eyes one more hint about what we're looking at. But the real extra obligatory optional step is some added highlights. Regular viewers might be sick of hearing me say this, but I will repeat myself. The airbrush is all well and good, but if you want real texture and depth, you need to do a pass of at least highlights with the good old brush brush. If you aren't used to doing it, matching the colours and finding the right tones can feel a little intimidating, I will grant you, but that's why we take the time to learn a little about colour theory, play with limited palettes and all that stuff. With just a little knowledge, we can look at our green, decide that it seems a little too saturated, and know that by mixing in a cool red, I mean, perfectly speaking a magenta, but I don't have that on my palette, will instantly get us that slightly more washed out look. Which reminds me, we still haven't done a colour mixing video, have we? We will get to it, I promise. And the other part of the puzzle is those brush strokes. Every stroke adds another bit of information to your story, so bear that in mind as you put brush to mini. 
Here, we're looking to enhance the sense of those chubby little rolls, so back and forth strokes across the volumes will help us, plus some stippling here and there to really send home the sense of pocked and unhealthy skin. Time enough to say a heartfelt thank you to these beautiful rotters oozing across your screen here, my lovely patrons. Check the link below if you fancy supporting my efforts, and of course, all the usual stuff is there too. An open Discord to come say hello in real time, the comments box to let me know your thoughts, and the like and sub buttons too. Let's do the last few details to up the ante on the grossness, starting with a little gloss varnish in the mouths and wounds. Some real finish variety does so much work in making these little chappies pop. And finally, just because I know if I left it in the reveal without mentioning it here, I'd get an earful in the comments, we need to get the wet mud texture paint and some oohoo glue out. Yep, we're going there. Nothing says Papa Nurgle like feces on an open wound, my friend. And that's your lot. Three little rotters to bring joy and plague to your wargaming table. But who am I kidding? You can't just paint three Nurglings, right? So here's a bunch more. Exactly the same process for this lot, with just one more paint, a warm yellow contrast paint, used for that one extra colour on the skin tones filtering stage. So, what do you think? Let me know down below, check out my channel for lots more theory and underpainting shenanigans, and I will catch you all next time.